Hi, I'm Jim Linnell. I want to show you a little bit about Sheridan style carving. Many people are mystified by this type of carving and you'll find that you can do a lot of it with the basic tools that you probably already have. We're going to do a checkbook cover pattern, so let's begin. First thing we need to do is to get our design traced onto the piece of leather. I've already moistened this piece of leather with uh, water making sure that it's not soaked all the way through. It is in fact starting to dry back to its original color. So now we need to put the design on there. And I've already got the design traced onto this piece of paper. And uh, I've got it already lined up and taped at one edge. So we're ready to begin transferring this onto the leather. I'm gonna use a stylus. It's just a uh, pointed tool that has a, a ball end on it that allows me to run over these lines with a little bit of pressure and uh, it will imprint that outline into the leather and by having the tracing material just tacked down at one edge I can pull this up and check and see how I'm doing you can see that the outline of the design now is starting to show up on that piece of leather so that's the first thing we do is to get this design traced onto the piece of leather. You want to follow the lines as closely as you can. You can do a little cleaning up when you're doing the cutting, but a good careful tracing is always the first step. And if you're not sure that you've went over a line already, you can always pick it up and look at it again. Okay, we should be about done with our tracing, but before we take it all loose, let's, let's pull it up and look one more time. Make sure we haven't missed any lines. And it looks like we got them all, so now it's time to begin cutting this design into the leather. We're ready to begin cutting this design into the leather. You can see that our leather still has plenty of moisture in it. It's still um, not quite back to its original color, so it's, it's just right for the cutting part. And we need to make sure our knife is ready to cut. I always keep a strop close by. This is just a piece of cardboard with jeweler's rouge rubbed into it. And uh, we'll make sure that this knife is ready to to cut smoothly. When you begin cutting, you want to uh, start usually with the foremost objects. I usually start with the flowers first and then work on all of the other uh, stems and leaves and such afterwards. When you're cutting in general, you want to always cut with uh, the knife coming towards you. You want to put enough pressure on the uh, blade so that as you're cutting you get about one-third to maybe even up to one-half the thickness of the leather so that way it'll get you maximum amount of depth out of whatever piece of leather you're working with. And as far as the blade that you're using use what you have. Use what you're most comfortable with. It doesn't take anything special but it, you do have to be careful. You want to follow the lines as closely as you can. Make sure that you get nice, clean cuts. There's one little cut or, or some marks here in the center of this uh, flower that, I, that are dotted lines, and that's the only lines that I'll not cut into the leather. That's there kind of as a guide for me when I put the seeds into this flower, so.
Now that our design is cut into the leather, it's again, good idea to check it over once. Yeah, make sure you haven't missed anything. You'll notice there's uh, the dotted lines in the center of this flower. I left those uncut, but it looks like everything else has been cut into the leather. So we're now ready to begin with the stamping. When I carve a Sheridan style pattern, I usually follow the same sequence that I do carving any other type of pattern. But I do one thing a little bit different. I like to start with the flower centers and get those positioned first before I go on to the next steps. So let's begin by putting the flower centers in these flowers. I'm going to use a, a tool, I think the number is 820. And We're going to stamp it in the center. We want to get a good, clean impression. Try not to let it bounce around much. Um, but we'll do that. Let, we'll use a little different one over in this other flower. Let's, uh, let's use a little larger one. And again, center it up real good. This is a bigger tool, so we're going to have to hit it a little harder. and get that flower center to really pop out like that. And then on this other flower over here, this has got a different type of seed in it. And so we're going to outline where those seeds go by using a camouflage tool. Now I'm going to line it up right on that dotted line that I didn't cut. And I'm going to lean it toward me a little bit so that I get a real sharp inside uh, curve on that so that it really bites into the leather. And that helps to make those seed areas pop out real good. And then we need to work that away so we'll just use the corner of this camouflage tool and make a series of impressions that fade out and I've flattened out the tool a little bit so that uh, I'm not leaving quite as sharp of a bite in the leather and as I move out I lightens up and disappears. Around the, uh, and we'll do the same thing around the, these others. Let's, let's run some camouflage impressions out here. We'll, again, real light running up the center of each of these petals. You'll notice that that sort of makes that uh, prominent ring disappear a little bit. Sometimes I like to even make that more pronounced by using uh, like the heel of a, of a pear shader. Uh, in Sheridan style carving they call these thumb prints, but basically it's just a long uh, pear shader with some lines in it. And I'm going to use this kind of like a beveler. I'm going to take the heel of it, the fat end of it, and I'm going to tip it up and kind of walk it around here. You notice it does a really good job of erasing any of those marks around there and it leaves just the flower center itself standing out. And it leaves a nice line texture that gives some color to the, this flower. And let's do the same thing with this other flower over here. Again, using just the heel of it. You want to make sure you don't flatten out those little seeds in the center. If you don't do this step here, you end up with your flowers looking like the seeds are sunken in a hole in the middle of it. And that's not what you want to want it to look like. You want them to look like they're standing out. So we bevel them. We're just going to use a pear shader to do the beveling. And we'll run some camouflage impressions in these petals as well.
As we begin to put the shading into the leaves, I want to tell you a little bit about the, the difference in the techniques that are used between traditional carving and Sheridan-style carving. They use tools that are called thumbprints. This is pretty typical of what it is. This is a long, narrow uh, pear shader that has some vertical lines on it. Sometimes they'll use lines running different directions. That's not important. But what, what a thumbprint is, is refers to the method in which it's used. When the Sheridan fellas are stamping with this technique, they will angle these longer tools back a little bit so that with one whack of the mallet, they get the effect of this shading tool fading out and disappearing. They'll usually put them into a flower petal like this to uh, create this ripple kind of effect, and that's what you want to accomplish. Now, the way I learned to use these tools, I learned how to walk them. I learned to use them as pear shaders. That way I can overlap the impressions. I can make sure that they fade out and disappear at the rate that I want them to, not at a rate that's dependent upon the length of the tool. And as with most pear shading, you want to start out with a lot of force at the top of the leaf, and then as you pull it toward the center of the flower, you will gradually fade out and disappear so that uh, it doesn't, you don't actually see where you ended. And by leaving those uh, raised areas in between each one of the shading sections, you will uh, create a lot of uh, three dimension in your carving. And if your leather is properly cased, you'll get a, a nice rich color. This comes from having just the right amount of moisture in your leather. The right amount of moisture is having it uh, moistened all the way through, but having the, the surface coming back to its original color. As you can see how this helps to highlight the, the center of the flower, makes the, the leaves look three-dimensional, and it's also giving it a lot of color as well. When you're doing this Sheridan type of stuff, you'll usually want your shading to fade out rather quickly so that it doesn't really reach all the way down to the flower center. You usually want it to uh, fade out fairly quick so that uh, it's just really pronounced along the edges of the, of the flower petals. On this other flower that we have here, uh, again, similar technique, there's a, a couple of swells at the end of each one of these petals. And so if we concentrate there, we leave a raised ridge in the center 